Hello, welcome back to another episode. We're about to make it over to Ogre's Death, but we have a while longer to go. We need to find more food. We are having to feed a lot more people now, which is pretty funny because if Jaren does not eat, we're about to make it. If only I can make it a little bit longer. You can already see the oasis a day's journey away, but in the glimmer of the midday sun, you're not sure whether it might not just be a mirage. But the twins are convinced that there is a village here, and the prospect of a roof over your heads for the night keeps you going. The nearer you get to the oasis, the more the uneasy feeling grows that something's not right. It's too quiet, and you don't see any movement. Once you enter the village, your fears are confirmed. Your enemies have already been here. Oh, great. Again, I'm hoping we find more provisions just to make it to the Dwarf Fortress, and then I'll buy a lot of food. Okay, here we are. We're just moving in, okay. A lot of fires lit. And no one's here. Ah, yeah, they're dead. The whole lot of them are gone. This whole thing is probably a trap. We should... Welcome to Pasna. I'm sure the citizens would greet you themselves, if they could. You recognize the elf immediately. You saw him with the leaders of the orcs, and he appeared to you in a dream after Greenglade. Or no, not in a dream. Synthras. So we meet again, Tangdil. What do you think of my work in the vaults? It was a nice start, wasn't it? An eerie smile sets on Synthras's lips. Wonderful! I can see the hatred in your eyes. Come on. Come and get your revenge! Oh great. Time for a huge battle. Who do I not want to use? Jaren, I like you a lot. You do have unholy aura. Okay. You damage them over time. What do you have? Self-healing. Ah, all right. You'll heal yourself. I do like that ability. I do like having my tanky friend as well. All right, Jared. I'm going to leave you out for now. We'll grab you, and I think we're not ready. All right. Uh huh? Is it really the big fight with them? Oh, the orcs are coming. Okay, bow and doll. I'm going to let you go handle that. Oh, okay. You. We'll let what is it? him handle that. I'm gonna let you what do your thing. You'll do this? your part. And you're gonna try to knock him off of his feet right now. Oh, beautiful! Immediately we got him. Retreat! Back! Why are you here? And how can you possibly still use magic? The one person your master left living is the one you would least like to have as an enemy. Go on, little Alf. Flee. Your magic saved you this time. But next time, I'll be prepared. Wow, we destroyed him. Completely, too. I've had enough of fighting. It's about time we head to your home. Oh, you've had enough, too. But we've got several days in the desert ahead of us before we can enjoy a cold beer. The longer we talk about it, the later we'll get to our beer. Let's go. I like the voice actor for Tungdale a lot, actually. I really do enjoy him. I'll have to go look up who it is. Ah, oh, no food. Great. We're gonna go hungry. No injuries and no food. One more day. You've been traveling through the desert for days. The sand is simply everywhere. In your shoes, under your clothes, in your mouths. Even the makeshift cloths that you've wrapped around your heads is of little help. One more. With the last of the energy you can muster, you finally leave the 40 mile wide sandbar that separated you from Ogre's death. It is as if you've passed through an invisible wall when the raging wind and sand suddenly fall silent. In front of you, 
an enormous massive towers into the sky, the Blue Range. The slopes cast long shadows over Ogre's Death Fortress, which nestles in the spurs of the mountain. Even from this distance it looks impressive, with its four defensive terraces, one above the other. The anticipation of entering a real dwarven city for the first time grows with every step, and you feel the power returning to your limbs. You've almost done it. We're finally here. It's been a long time since we've had to make it here, and we finally made it. Now we can find out more answers to questions that I have, and Tungdil has too. Like why he's chosen to come here. I have an idea, but hey. Whoa. My High King, you have called me to succeed you to the throne. Here I stand before you. Well, <coughs> before you are chosen as the successor to the High King, here, King Gandagar, the challenges that await you. Hordes of orcs are rampaging through the north and the west, and the perished land is stirring. It would seem that the Magi cannot sustain the barriers. This gives us an excellent opportunity to attack the last elves in Allendor. They are weakened. The perished land afflicts them. Let us wipe out the traitors once and for all. Yes, right. Exactly. Mm. Here he is. Madness. What are you talking about? I do not recognize you, King Gandagar, in what you are saying. The elves are inhabitants of Girdlegard. Has your hatred for them clouded your senses to the point that you wish to ignore the words of our god? Belendolin's gaze falls, as if incidentally, on the king of the fourthling's advisor. Or is someone giving you bad advice? On the contrary, it was Bislipper who finally supplied me with the proof. A report titled How the Fifflings Lost the Gate. It was the elves that poisoned the brave Fiffling warriors in their stronghold. A devious disease spread by the pointy ears in the shafts of the Grey Range. Impossible! I always knew it! Treason! I don't believe they that. They should pay for it! Enough! Don't be so short-sighted! We are talking about the safety of Girdle Guard. We must reach out and forge a large coalition with the Elves. Yes! And even with the Thirdlings, if we are to defeat the perished land. My High King, you cannot be serious. Drivel from a dwarf who has grown too old in his post. Are we not here to choose a new High King? We have waited long enough. It would seem you will have to wait a little bit longer. The second aspirant has arrived. Our guests must be tired from their long journey. The meeting is adjourned till tomorrow. There's an old dwarf. I mean, High King. He's been here for a long time. <laughs> Looks like I have a job now, or I might. But why do you think that I... Everything will become clear. I've had a room prepared for you. Before you take to your bed, please pay the High King and I a visit in the throne room. I'm like, hey, what's going on? Okay, I'll go there in a moment, but can I look around for a bit? What an incredible location. The scope of it is rather incredible. Ah, your highness! Heir apparent. What do you know? Spit it out. A slight expression of guilt flits briefly across Boindil's face, but he's soon back to his old self. A scholar as I king has something to it. You certainly have our votes, that's for sure. 
Boendal nods in agreement. As High King, you could unite the kingdoms and get them to do battle against Nod On. You look at your friends and aren't really sure whether they are trying to pull your leg or not. I, 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 I can't be High King. I, I, I got all my knowledge from 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 books and and you, you're. Uh, you're pulling my leg, right? The twins' grins grow ever wider, and it would seem they can hardly contain themselves. <laughs> Just talk to High King Gundrabur and Belindalin. They will explain everything. High King Gundrabur seems... well... Old? He is ancient, even by Dwarvish standards. He has been old for as long as I can remember. Belindalin has taken care of most matters for dozens of cycles. But Gundrabur always has the final word. <laughs> His mind is younger than all of ours, I tell ya. Belendolin should become High King. I was there when Arunt took his arm. He still managed to kill half a dozen of them afterwards. What fighting spirit! We had to drag him off the battlefield! The law requires that a firstling, or a fourthling, must be chosen as the new King of all Dwarves. And... As the Firstlings didn't turn up... For the first time, you have the chance to appreciate the beauty of the place. You suddenly forget what you wanted to say. I've never seen such masterful masonry. To be honest, I didn't even know that stone could be worked in such a way. Ha ha ha! The Secondlings are the best masons of all the kingdoms! That's how Fracas made us. Well, he made some of us into warriors, too. Boendal glances at his brother, and he laughs with satisfaction while looking around the hall himself. I think I'll continue to look around. Don't get lost. And tonight, we will finally drink a lovely dark ale in the glowing anvil. That we will. Okay, we'll go look around. I've learned more about what is going on, at least a bit more. I should probably... Oh, hold on, before we go talk to them. The Abyss, oh... Check that out. You can't see the bottom. When the Secondlings named the Blue Range their home, there was nothing here but hard rock and a few small caves. Fantastic. It really is. I mean, the scope here is incredible, and I've seen a lot of really cool dwarf holds in various, you know, franchises or whatever, but here's one that's really incredible. All right, let's pop in now and have a chat. Tongdil, come closer. The power that the old High King radiated when he called the Assembly to order has drained away from him. His body is sunken in the throne, but his eyes are alert and interested as he looks at you. The lost son returns to his people. Thank Vrakus. Tell us what you learned on your journey. You describe your adventure down to the smallest detail. Neither the King nor his advisor interrupts you. From time to time, they nod, as though they were already aware of certain facts. Their brows become more furrowed with every passing minute. When you're finished with your story, you also have some questions. What game is being played here? Gandogar, as king of the fourthlings, is to supersede me as High King, but his mind is poisoned with hatred towards the Elves. He would probably win a war against them, but he would weaken us, and Girdlegard would not be helped by this. I was hoping for a great coalition with the Elves, and even with the Thirdlings. I would have given anything to start the negotiations. In times of great need, only the common goal can count. And which role have you planned for me? Well, with you as a second aspirant, certain possibilities of protocol open up to us. I don't want to appear ungrateful, I, and I'm happy to finally be among my people, but, but I will not ascend the throne. I hardly know anything about our customs and laws. Everything that I know, I have learned from books that Lot Yonan gave me. There must be more suitable heirs than me. Your renouncement honors you. But to be honest, you never had a claim. To stop Gandagar, we had to stall for time. 
Lot Yonan helped us with our little story. We don't even know if you are a fourth thing. The King's advisor misinterprets your unbelieving gaze and quickly adds... Uh, we're only being as deceitful as goblins for one solitary reason. To stave off possible harm to our people. You feel as though you've been hit in the stomach. If this is true, not only have you lost your newly found kingdom, but Master Lot Yonan also didn't see it as necessary to inaugurate you in the conspiracy. Why is Gandagar so full of hatred towards the elves? His father and brother were murdered by elves. At least that's what's claimed. No one knows the truth. Just as no one knows how true this report about the fifthlings is. But isn't it strange that this letter has turned up now, just when it can play into the hands of the elf haters? Many dwarves' hatred towards the elves is great. Perhaps even greater than their honesty. I understand why you want to prevent a High King Gandagar. You'll be blind to our real problems. Gandagar's only liability is that he lets Bislipper whisper dark thoughts in his ear. The advisor is the problem, not the king. A problem that I am fortunate enough not to have. The High King smiles weakly at his advisor. Gandagar is a good dwarf and a good king, and I am certain he could also be a good High King if he was free of Bislipur's lies and false advice. Your plan has a flaw. Even if I were to light up, I couldn't win. No one on the council will vote for me. You don't have to win. Belendolin points to the Steelys in the throne room. It's written in our laws that the High King can oppose an heir if he isn't elected unanimously. He can then demand a duel or a contest in order to determine the winner. Such a contest could take weeks, if not months, and it would win us some time. What kind of contest will you have us compete in? Gandagar is surely superior to me in many things. Everyone in the council will write a task on a piece of paper, and from them the contest will be drawn. And this only once you have made a speech, and have won over as many as possible in the council to your side. The more sympathetic the council is towards you, the higher the chances of a contest that fits your abilities. Speech? You're beginning to like this whole thing less and less. Is this really the best for our people? If you cannot dissuade Gandagar from carrying out his plans, it could end in a fraternal war. Don't worry. We'll open up his eyes and he will recognize the malice of his feigned friend. We just need time, and you must gain it for us. All right then, I am ready to do it. But I will need all of your support. You can be certain of it, Tungdil. Belendolin smiles at you encouragingly. You say Andakai may have found a way to defeat Nodon. And she suspects that the Magus is possessed by a demon from the Outer Lands. It may be possible to kill this demon with an axe called Keenfire. I have commissioned armor that is worthy of a prince. It will be delivered to your chamber by sunrise. You say goodbye with a queasy feeling in your stomach. You always thought that you were articulate, but the prospect of having to make a speech in front of the large council doesn't exactly fill you with elation. Yeah, no kidding. All right, let's go look around. Vrakus, who made the Dwarves of Stone, has himself been hewn from stone by these self-same dwarves. A masterly piece of work, like one of which only the Masons of the Secondlings can still accomplish today. Even for a dwarf, High King Gundrabur is very old. His long white beard suggests 500 or more cycles. He seems weak, but when you talk to him, you feel an aura of grandeur. The High King's advisor has the build of a warrior. His eyes are like those of a bird of prey, and you can see a keen intellect behind them. You skim over the ornate runes and look for the passage that Gundrabor and Belendolin told you about. 
if there is more than one candidate from a kingdom and none can bring together all of the votes for themselves in a ballot, the High King can decide whether to declare the candidate with the most votes the winner or to have the candidates compete in a contest to determine the victor. The coal fire is lit when the kingdoms meet for council. It has lain dormant much too long until it was finally lit again a few days ago. We can go back now. A speech. I'm gonna have to give a very good speech. I'm sure I'll like choose the options for it. I would imagine I would. Huh. Hopefully I'll do well at it. Okay. Now we can go around for a bit, I think. Let's go have a chat with them. That's ah, what we'll do. Tungdil, what is it? The High King and his advisor don't know where I come from either. But they only want to use me to delay Gandagar's coronation and ultimately prevent war with the elves. Whatever happens, we will stand by your side, scholar. You're not sure whether the moral support of your friends will be much use in a contest with Gandagar, but it feels good not having to go through the whole thing on your own. I think I'll continue to look around. Don't get lost. And tonight, we will finally drink a lovely dark ale in the glowing anvil. That is very true. We will go do that eventually. I need to go look around, though. It's a rather vast location, and I need to find out whatever I can about it. The chamber. Is it, like, the one chamber? Can I go through here? Maybe I can't. No, I don't think I can. There's guards all around. I wanted to look around more. What an incredible location, though. Okay. Now we can head in here. Andakai, what is it? I came to return these books to you, Tungdil. Luckily, I was able to make sense of most of it. You observed how the Mega took time to study the books during your escape. They are records from the Outer Lands. They tell of demonic beings from Barren Ground who can take possession of humans and invest them with great power. Immortality, for example? The Mega nods seriously. They speak of an axe forged by the Undergrounders called Keenfire. It is said to have the power to cut through the flesh and bone of the living and completely destroy the demonic spirit deep within their soul. So you think a demon from the Outer Lands has taken possession of Nudin? He looked very different when I encountered him in Parista, and he rose from the dead even though you cut off his head. That can't be explained purely through the power of the perished land. And he wanted to prevent these books from falling into our hands. That would only make sense if Keenfire had the power to defeat him. Where is this Keenfire? I don't know if this weapon was ever forged. It requires rare materials and masterful craftsmanship. The purest, harder steel, stone barbs decorated with runes, a hilt of Sigurdaisy wood, inlays made of all the noble metals, the blades studded with diamonds, smithed in the hottest forge. We are dwarves. We have the most talented craftsmen. And you have the Sigurdaisy wood. It is amongst the objects in your rucksack, which is fortunate as there are no more Sigurdaisies in Girdelgard. But even if you manage to forge the axe, it might all be just a fairy tale. It's too little to wager our lives on. Do you know these undergrounders? I have never heard of the Undergrounders, but I've been to the Outer Lands before. It must be terrible. The hordes of Teon have marched from there against our strongholds for thousands of years. It's not as bad as you think. It is certainly safer than a land in which a Magus possessed by a demon is on the loose. We can get all the missing materials, as well as a gem cutter, here in the stronghold. After all, Gandagar and his fourthlings are here, a stonemason from the secondlings, and I can smith. The Mega looks at you thoughtfully, and for a short time it seems as though your enthusiasm is rubbing off on her. But then she says, I wish you good luck, Tungdil. You still want to leave Girdelgard, but, but what will happen to your realm and, and all the other realms? I admire your optimism, my friend, but it isn't wise to stand in the way of a rolling stone. I don't wish to give up my realm, but I would only be prolonging the suffering unnecessarily. But... You don't want to let the last Mager in Girdelgard go. Unfortunately, you can't think of anything that could cause her to stay. Many thanks, Honorable Mager, for all that you have done.
Well, that's unfortunate. I guess Jaren. A variety of cheeses, pickled cave mushrooms, toasted vault moss, and some smoked sausage. Mmm. The intense smell of the cheese makes your mouth begin to water. It's a green cheese. I don't know if I like that very much. Garen found an answer to the threat. Keenfire. No matter how difficult it is to forge it, we must do it. We don't know of anything else that could injure a demon. Okay, what more can I do in here? I mean, they wanted a drink, you but... You are looking forward to the first proper bed for weeks. I mean, they wanted to have drinks. That's what I'm curious about. <laughs> How can I have a drink with them if I'm going to go to bed? Alright, can I actually go around? No, I can't go over there yet. We'll go chat with them one more time, then we'll head back. I wonder if they'll ever be back. I'm sure they might be one day. I don't know, though. Ah, Tongdil, what is it? Andakai deciphered what was written in the books that Garen wanted to send to Turga the Fairfaced. They tell of a demonic threat from the Outer Lands and how it can be stopped. Nudin cannot be killed by normal weapons, but undergrounders have developed a weapon that might be able to do it. Keenfire. Undergrounders? What's that supposed to mean? You shrug your shoulders. Maybe there are dwarves in the Outer Lands too. Either way, they have described how this magical weapon can be made. If it's got anything to do with magic, the weapon cannot be dwarfish. We shouldn't go anywhere near it. Nudin fears the books. I believe that Keenfire is our best chance of stopping him. I think I'll continue to look around. Don't get lost. And tonight, we will finally drink a lovely dark ale in the glowing anvil. All right, well... We let him know everything. So I'm going to bed. I don't know how to get there. There is a way for me to get there from where I'm at. We'll go back to the chamber. Is that like my chamber alone? It's a big chamber to have for one entrance. I doubt it. It's got to be like some type of dormitory maybe. I don't know. I could be wrong. But what a guest room. Yeah, it's pretty small. Beautiful. I'd live in here. Oh man, would I ever. You are what looking a... forward to the first proper bed. You undress and lie down. Before you know it, your eyes close and you fall asleep. It's a nice looking bed. I'd sleep in that bed. When your new armor is brought to you the next morning, you can hardly believe your eyes. However, as a smith, you can't stand the fact that you haven't contributed anything to it and decide to add some inlays. Even one who wears the armor of a prince can still be a farrier underneath it, don't you think, Tungdil Bolifar? Just like a snake in elegant clothing is still a snake. Ignoring your question, Bislipur eyes you very exactly before he speaks. So, you want to be one of our kingdom? A foundling brought up by a wizard, one wouldn't think it possible. And I don't think it possible either. There is no proof of your origin and Gandagar has the council on his side. Why don't you spare yourself the disgrace and just not turn up in front of the council? Put your scheme to bed and we will take you into our kingdom. We will give you everything you need your whole life long. In exchange, you support Gandagard instead of challenging him. Proof? Oh, you mean like your letter that has been found after a thousand cycles and makes the elves responsible for the fall of the fifthlings? It is no secret that the elves are deceitful. And what could possibly be more suited to get one over on us than letting the perished land in and presenting us as the scapegoat? The elves have been displaced by the perished land and are now almost eradicated. I said they are deceitful, not wise. Children of the smith cannot be silenced. You 
are a dwarf, I confess. But no fourthling can remember a dwarf child ever going missing. And you know thousands of the fourthlings personally, and know exactly where they live in the mountains, what they're planning, or what small tragedies take place in their lives? You have a sense that all the long evenings in the library and debating with Lot Yonan weren't for nothing, as Bislipper struggles for a reply, then lets it go. <laughs> I won't lie, he's pretty good at it. It's fantastic. You have had enough of this dwarf. He makes you feel uneasy, or worse still. Get out! A humanized bastard will not issue me orders. Yeah. <laughs> Know your place, false dwarf. What a scar. I hate that guy already. The armor has been made by a master. Over the chainmail is steel plate, alloyed with gold in many places which certainly appeals to you. There are also several decorative elements made of stone to honor its origin in the kingdom of the best stonemasons. You had just finished setting the last inlay, the seal of Lot Yonan, who brought you up and is gone, when Bislipper interrupted you. Some of the gold has left a coin-sized mark on the back of your hand. It hurts, but you like the idea that a bit of the metal you love is now part of you. Oh. Not only is it worthy of a king and fits me like a glove, but it should also offer me additional protection in battle. I would hope that it would. Oh, now we look great. Okay. Nothing else to look at in here. We have armor. Beautiful armor. <laughs> it should offer you. No, it will offer you. That is why I, too, lodge a claim to the throne, and why I think I am the more capable heir. Thank you for your speech, Tungdil Bolifar. The council may now ask questions. Bislipper? Nothing you say will convince anyone here. You didn't grow up amongst us, and no one knows if you really are a fourthling. I do not believe there has ever been a more unworthy heir to the throne of the High King. You are just wasting our time. It's true. I have nothing to present to you regarding my lineage that would eliminate all doubt. But is that really important? Shouldn't my deeds count for more than my lineage? Let me prove what I can achieve. As long as he's capable. Well, when you put it that way, lineage is important. And if you aren't capable of anything... Yes, the dwarf from the Second Link Kingdom over there. You say that a war against the elves would be madness. But how can such a young dwarf as you judge that? <laughs> You've hardly seen anything of the world, has he? It is true. There is much that I only know from books. But it is written that it is our duty to defend and protect Girdlegard, and that includes the elves. And don't the elves have the same enemy as we do? They could stand by us in battle. Why should we play into the hands of the enemy by attacking them rather than working against the enemy together? That is true. He's right. The words of a clever warrior. But the point he is hates us, and we hate them, too. What is it they say again? My enemy's enemy is my friend. Yes? Your question? Just so I get this right, you want to forge a weapon that is described in a book of fairy tales from the perished land to kill a demon that none of us has ever seen? I have most definitely seen it, Goingar, yellow belly shimmerbeard. <laughs> Let's go look over here. The dwarves must act. We have seen the perish land with our own eyes, and its master Nodon could not be killed. 
Many have died for the books in which it is written how keen fire can be made. And the Magus did all he could to get his hands on the two hearths made of Sigurd Daisy wood. Those are the facts, whether you like them or not. These problems won't solve themselves, so I ask you, is it the Dwarven way to step aside and do nothing, or is it our way to act? To act? Uh, we don't hide away. If the humans won't stop the Paris land, then we will. We shouldn't get drawn in. Let's show the Magus the strength of the Dwarves. I have heard enough. The Council has heard the words of both candidates and must now make its decision. Those of you who wish to see Tungdil Bolifar, the returning son from the Fourthling Kingdom, as my successor, raise your axe. And those who wish to see Gandagar Silverbeard from the Silverbeards, the King of the Fourthlings, as my successor. Gandagar has received more votes. Very good. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> Excellent! Here's to Gandagar! Long live our new High King! However, the result was not unanimous. And as acting High King, I avail myself of my right to demand a contest between the aspirants. What is this? But he won the ballot. That's the rules. The High King has the right to do so. Respect! He is still the High King. Silence! You have heard the High King's command. Write down your challenge for the aspirants. Oh boy. Are you ready? The one that masters this task first will become the High King. It is... An expedition. The trial is to lead a group to forge the axe Keenfire in the Grey Range, which can then be used to fight against the Magus Nod On. Ah. An expedition into the perished land? Ha <laughs> ha! Brilliant! You can't be serious. That's what I call a worthy challenge, don't you think? I call it luck, Scholar. Of all the challenges, Bislapur draws this one. <laughs> yes. Luck. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. Okay, well, we've got a grand journey ahead of us. But, my king, don't demand this of me. Why me, of all people? You are one of my best gem cutters, and I promise to support him. It should be a fair contest. Or should I break my word just because of you? But... You will go, Goimgar Shibabeard. Do not put us to shame. Follow Tungdil's instructions. Go! And come back in good health. And with that, our group is complete. Who have you chosen as Mason? Good day, gentlemen. Bavragar? The old drunkard? Old drunkard? He assured me he's the best stonemason here. The High King himself sent him. Well, I said I was precisely the stonemason you need. I didn't exactly say I was sent by the High King. You let yourself be tricked by a drunkard. I don't want him with us. Rest assured, Boindil, I too could imagine better company. But Tungdil gave me his word. Yes, I gave you my word. And as long as you are capable of doing the stonework needed for Keenfire, you are welcome. Girdleguard is at stake here. I wish you no ill fortune, Tungdil. But also, no good fortune. The throne belongs to me. And through my victory, Vrakus will show the clans. The task is clear to the contenders. The first to forge keen fire and bring it back here has proven his abilities and will be our new High King to lead us in battle against Nod On. 
It will take months to complete the task. The journey to the Fiflings alone is a long and dangerous business. Dangerous, yes, but not necessarily long. Do you know the old tunnel system that connects the Dwarven Kingdoms? Tunnels are all well and good, but why should we get there so much quicker under the ground than over it? A knowing smile plays on the mouth of the advisor. Well... Well, what? <laughs> They're about to find out. I better be able to buy food here. I mean, I'm sure I can. It'd be weird if I didn't for a long journey like that. <laughs> Pretty impressive what our forefathers achieved here, isn't it? The kingdoms all work together. If we do the same, nothing is impossible. Here, here. I still don't understand why you tricked me and why you were so set on coming with us. I have been the master of stone for more than 200 sun cycles. My work is admired all over Girdlegard. There has never been a better secondling mason than me. But today? I don't want to be remembered as a drunkard with the chisel trembling in my hand, but as Bavragor Amethyst, undefeated master of stone who brought keen fire to life. One last masterpiece. I... I hope you understand me asking, but... There seems to be bad blood between you and Boindil. There's nothing that will endanger our mission. We've just always hated each other. There's more behind it than commonplace hatred. Bavragor doesn't react. His gaze is directed towards events that took place a long time ago. You really should rein in your drinking. We need you in good shape. There are some who say I'm only the master of beer and not the master of stone anymore. But don't worry. I haven't forgotten. I can't forget. No matter how much I drink. Hmm. I wonder why we haven't seen any sign of Gandagar recently. Perhaps they took a wrong turn somewhere. I'm sure we'll reach the Fifthling Kingdom before them. <laughs> We're not on the way to the Fifthlings. We are on the way to the Firstlings. We're probably already under the land of the Custodian. The Firstlings? Why? The Firstlings have been the best smiths in Girdlegard since the Fifthlings were wiped out. Only they can alloy Teonium and Palandium, which are actually mutually repellent. Anyway, we could use all the help we can get in the battle against Nodon and... They gave me food, not a lot. Lovely. I bet I was sabotaged. Damn. Goimga. It burns. We won't get further this way, Scholar. What now? It's all your fault, you imposter. I was nearly killed, and for what? It is good that you are still alive. We need you for our mission. So you can steal a throne that doesn't belong to you? Hatred glints in the gem cutter's eyes. And for a moment, you think he's going to attack you with the courage of desperation. I'm not interested in the title of High King. I am trying to save Girdlegard. Even if you don't believe anything else, you must believe this. I don't have to believe anything. I am here against my will. My own thoughts are my only remaining right. Enough! Gather up all the materials we can still save. If we manage to reach the Firstlings, we can get anything we're missing there. And it should be less than 200 miles to their stronghold. Oh, that is a journey. I need to get more food. I'm definitely going to have to look around. After you have gathered together the materials, you begin to search for a way out. And after a sweaty climb, you reach a door adorned with runes. 
From here, you enter a large cave with a waterfall covering a sun-drenched opening. You walk through the waterfall one after another, and after the unintentional shower, you find yourselves in Weyan, near the enchanted realm of Oromyra. You find yourselves on a plateau, and the river which falls as a waterfall here hides the entrance to the underground rail network. It then flows past a forest, behind which you can see a wall and tiled roofs. You check the map. That must be Mifidalia. We'll go through the forest to the city and see if we can refresh our supplies and buy some ponies. That'll work. I like that. I'm not a big fan of Gongar, but hey. No new abilities right now. Alright, well, thank you for watching. Do not forget to leave a like down below if you did enjoy this. And don't forget to sub too and check out my channel. And as always, until then, there will be a lot more content on the way.